Greetings and welcome to our channel. I'm Eve with The Baby's Booty. This video is a So What Pro tutorial. So What Pro is an embroidery design editing software program. This tutorial will benefit those who machine embroider or wish to learn more about it. You should already have a machine and have purchased designs to fully benefit from this video. Today's tutorial is going to be about getting you started with Sewa Pro. Sewa Pro has a few default settings as well as a few simple tricks that should help you get started and take care of some editing things that you may want to have done um, when trying it out for the first time. Now, generally, this would be done with the demo version. However, I don't have it um, to let you know ahead of time. There are some limitations with the demo version, and we'll go over those as we get into the program. So what I'm going to do is erase this from off of the desktop for right now. And let's delete. So we'll go over here um, in your project panel, and we're going to select this first color stop here, and we're going to delete that. That's one way to delete. Um, you also can do the undo button here, to bring it back. We'll select that and you can also hit delete on your keyboard and that will also um, delete anything from off of the desktop as long as you have that color stop selected. So let's open up a design. Um, and the last thing that I was in was in letters. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to find something kind of simple. Let's see what I have that I could use. Let's pick these stars. Right, because they have the different colors. Now, in order to view your workspace larger, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, when you pull up the design, it will be, first of all, in, you know, this top left hand corner, kind of small. You can zoom in from down here on this slider. You can click and zoom in, or you can scroll your mouse wheel and it will zoom in in increments. Also, when you get started and you open up a pattern, the pattern that you open should open up in its respective hoop size that the design was uh, created with. So this particular design was created for a four by four hoop. So it automatically will open in a four by four hoop. Now, if you want to have a design, um, say for instance, I want this to be bigger, a couple of ways you could do that would be allow it to open up in its respective hoop, and then you can change the hoop size here. Or what you could do is start out with the hoop size that you want. So what I'll do is select this particular pattern and I'm gonna hit delete. And what we'll do is do a new design. And I'm going to go ahead and get the hoop that I want. Um, now I have my machine selected here, so I'm just going to say all hoops and we're in the brother tab. One of the things that should help you or help anyone when you're starting out with so what pro is there are a lot of hoop um, options available just in general with our machines. So the uh, programmers thought it would be helpful to go ahead and pre-program those different hoop sizes for you. Now what I've learned is the millimeter size is the one that's generally the most accurate because if you go with inches, notice here it's going to show 1.97 by 1.38. Now for me, I didn't do that well with math in school. So those decimal points are throwing me off and I'm having to figure out which one is the right one for me to use. So fortunately, I have a loving husband that taught me to learn millimeters um, and mo the majority of the world uses millimeters in the US. We generally do um, imperial, which is the inches. But with the metric, the measurements are dead on. So if you notice now it's saying 60 by 40, 360 by 60, 100 by 100, which I know is the four by four and so on and so forth. So it allows you to choose a better 
a more accurate hoop size based on the metric system. So we'll select this here, the baby lock large 180 by 130. And then we'll go up here and we'll select my pattern again. Now it may not uh, do it from when you first open it up. So I may have to change that again. Actually, I'm gonna pick this one instead. Because it's only three colors. That's that's pretty much where I wanted to go with this. Okay, so three colors and this again a four by four design. So it popped up in four by four. So I'm gonna go back here and we're going to choose that larger frame again. Um can't remember which one I think it was this one. Okay. So we'll hit OK. All right. Now one of the first things you'll notice um when I opened it is there's a inner hoop here. All right. So the hoops is one of your most um, testing areas when you're first starting out. So you want to make sure everything is what it needs to be. So we're going to go to hoop insert. And notice here it says display hoop insert. Not quite sure why there would be a hoop insert there. I haven't covered that part yet because I up until recently have only been doing four by four so there was no need for a hoop insert so now that i don't need one i'm going to take off this display hoop insert so we're going to do that and we're going to hit okay so now your uh, frame your chosen frame is wide open free for you to use with whatever you want another tip that you would want to do is set your default hoop if you are um, using just one specific hoop, you can actually set a default hoop. And notice mine is already set 100 by 100 millimeters. You can clear your default hoop, and then we can go back in and set a default hoop. And this is also where you could use to calibrate a hoop. So I already had set the 100 by 100 as my default hoop. You can change that. Say, for instance, I want the 200 by 300 to be my default hoop. You select the hoop and then set default hoop. All right. And notice here it changed to the 200 by 300. So it's not any longer the 4x4. Four four. And then you can hit OK and it'll save that. So that's a good tip as well for if you want to use the same hoop for the most part over and over. That's a common hoop type that you use quite a bit. So let's go back to our little spaceman. Um, with our spaceman, he is, if you look over here on your information panel, he's 9.79 millimeters by 76.2 millimeters high and 8,758 stitches. Now, when you're using Sew Up Pro and you go to resize your pattern, one of the things you don't want to do is resize by dragging these handles here and i'll show you why so again we have 8758 stitches over here so when you drag this and you make it smaller and that's the size that i may want look over here at your total stitches it's still showing 8758 stitches that's not what you want because what will happen is it, your machine will try and cram all of those stitches down in that small little space that you resized. It didn't adjust the density. You want to have that density adjusted because if you don't, then it will wind up binding your machine and your machine will be doing a lot of stitches in the same little area. And uh, it will turn into what a friend of mine, Mr. John Deere calls, bulletproof embroidery and we don't want that so what i'm going to do is do the undo button up here and put it back to the original pattern is what it was and then we'll go up here to uh, tools resize pattern and now you can make sure that right here auto adjust stitch density make sure that that is selected we can do it by percentage so make it a percent smaller um, and you kind of want to lock your aspect ratio but you don't have to so say for instance i don't want it to be uh uniform in the uh, orientation that it is i can actually take that off and change the uh 
make it more square whereas right now it's longer on along the sides than it is high so i'm actually going to leave my aspect ratio and i'm going to leave measuring percent of initial size and right now it's at a hundred percent big so i'm going to make it down drop it 10 percent down smaller so we're going to change it to 90 percent now over here notice 8744 so we're going to drop that and now look your total stitches has changed so now when you go to embroider this out you won't have the bulletproof stitching the stitching will the density has adjust adjusted to the size of the actual pattern so when you go to do um your resizing of whatever it is whether it be a design whether it be letters you really want to pay attention to using the uh, tools and the resize pattern to adjust your embroidery design now another caveat that was brought out um, just in general uh, when it comes to embroidery designs all right this is uh, from an embroidery designer himself what I was told um, and I learned this in doing digitizing um, whenever you take a design that's already there so say for instance this space man or whether it be you know any other picture or any other font no matter what it is when you go to resize it and you change the density and all of that kind of stuff um what you're doing is is not supporting the integrity of the design so as he mentioned to me you really should not adjust the size of embroidery designs by very much at all if any because you really would want to for optimum stitch out performance you want to stitch it out at the size that it was digitized so if you want it smaller then you really should be looking for a smaller version of that particular design or that particular letter um, and now there are some exceptions like for instance um, in our embroidery machines I use a brother um, there are built-in fonts in the embroidery machine and you can resize the lettering that came with the machine and it should stitch out just fine because those letters were made for that machine to resize it and it already has it programmed in to do so and yes there are uh, some machines that have it where you can resize a pattern in the machine and it shouldn't make a difference but to make sure that you stitch it out optimum um, design the way it was intended he suggested that you leave it the size that it was digitized and that's only from that's coming from a master digitizer that's been doing uh, embroidery from before there was machine embroidery so um, or automatic digital machine embroidery so you, you definitely may want to take a, a minute to consider what he had to say all right so back to our design now this is back to the original size what we're going to do is add some letters all right now I had already opened up letters prior to um, and in order to do that normally you would go to merge and then you would navigate to your lettering folder and you would choose the lettering that you want so say for instance I want it back to black then I could choose that and we could choose one inch lettering and say for instance we want to put um, Lee on here so we're going to pick the L and the L opens up way over here which it shouldn't and what I'm going to do is put this hoop back I don't know why it changed probably because that's my default hoop so I'll put that back to where it was and then there's the L I'm going to go to my info icon view because I've already opened up um, and merged in one of the letters so we want to add the others so when you open up info icon view which is here it opened up the folders that you have been in recently the way to get rid of that is you can delete album folders 
And this is the one with all the pictures that I don't want. So I'm going to highlight that one and I'm going to hit OK. And it goes away. Easy peasy. So now we're back in looking at our letters. Now, if you open Info Icon View and it doesn't look like this, where all of your letters are laid out, check your alphabet mode. Notice when I take alphabet mode off, all of my letters are now um, big and I can't see all of them. Well, that's because alphabet mode is for when you're spelling out something and it automatically puts the letters in a row. Um, but you could definitely use info icon view to add other patterns in and you really would not maybe not want those to go in a row. Um, and you may not need a whole bunch of them lined up like that. So that's why the alphabet mode is there. So make sure alphabet mode is selected because we are spelling out a name. And then I'm going to go and add the other E's or Lee. And then, of course, you can move them around to however or wherever you want them to go and add them to your pattern. Now, these letters automatically have uh, they're colored and they're green. So I don't want these to be green. So I'm going to click the color stop. And I'm going to change them to this copper because that's the color that I want. And I'm going to do each one. Now you can hold down your control key and highlight and click each one and change all of them at one time. But in this instance, I'm doing them one at a time. So now here we have a little space guy for Lee that we're going to stitch out maybe like on a pillowcase or whatever. Well, in the demo version of So What Pro, so this definitely is beneficial for whomever is using the demo version of this program. When you go to save this file, because it's all there and this is what you want. Now, let's take a note of a couple of things first, though. Here we have six color stops. So what that essentially tells you is when you save this, this design and you take it over to your embroidery machine, it's going to stitch step number one, which is the light green. Then it's going to stitch step number two, which is this darker emerald green. Then your machine will stop. Then it will stitch number three, which is celery. Then your machine will stop. And then you'll stitch number four, which is the capital L. Your machine will stop. Then it'll stitch number five. Your machine will stop. Then it'll stitch number six. We don't want all those stops in our design. Now, unless you do, and you don't want jump stitches from letter to lettering, that's useful for that. So that you can make like on the four by four machines, we don't have automatic jump stitch cutting. So we would want to stop in between letters. Sometimes I do that when it's small lettering and I don't want um, my letters to have jump stitches in between them. I'll allow each letter to stop. That's very beneficial for that. But if you have a machine that automatically cuts your jump stitches, and this is inconvenient. You don't want the machine to keep stopping. Well, you can change that. Um, so, and this also could help for those who are using the demo version and you want to see um, your lettering on your design and see how it would stitch out or see how it would work. All right, so we have this and we have six color stops. So what we're going to do is merge these color stops, especially the copper. We're going to go up here and we're going to go to edit and we're going to join threads. And what we're going to do is join all adjacent threads of the same color. So the colors have to be exactly the same in order for them to join. So we're going to select that and then we're going to click OK. So now instead of six color stops, we have four. The problem is with the demo version of so what pro when i go up here to file and i go to save it's going to open up um and why didn't it what am i doing wrong oh it's because i just hit save so we want to save as sorry and what you're going to do is get a box pop up and it's going to save and then you have your file format and you're going to put in the name that you want um, your file to save as. So I'm just going to put a little letter A so that it would be different. When I hit save, this should pop up on your screen. 
it should be this little box that says, hi, you know, if you hit save, it's only going to save the first three color stops because this is the demo version. That's what this means. That's what that pretty much lets you know is you're using the demo version. So what you're going to only get when you save this is one, two, and three. You're not going to get four. I understand the reason behind that. Sometimes you can get a demo version and there are ways to override if, if it's a full version of a demo and try and erase whatever data off of a computer or something or whatever. The program itself in comparison to its brethren programs that are out there that are way more expensive than so what pro the cost is very very low in comparison to those so to take advantage of a program at that price is you know unfortunate so we don't want to take advantage of that program which is why they gave a limited version so of course if you do purchase the program the full version will allow you to save all four color stops and even if I had a left hit six color stops, it would have saved every last one of them. The demo version, you're only going to get one, two, and three. So let's do something. Let's take out some of this shading. Um, we'll take out the, the least amount of shading, this light color here. So I'm going to select this first color stop and I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to take it out because I still can kind of see my little, my little guy here, um, even though there's a space there because that's where the shading was. Um, but now I have one, two, and three. So what you can do is say this, and it will stitch out with the little space guy and the name under it when you take it to the machine. And of course, um, you would save as. You also can do write to removable media. If your computer is attached to your machine, you can write to removable media. And what it will do is allow you to select the external drive of where it's going to go and then you can um, send it over to your machine so that's another way to do that and I have a video on that as well so this is just some basic things to get you started um, on using so what pro um, say for instance you want to print this out for your records um, so you have over here, you have uh, your coloring and you want to make sure that you use the exact same thing. The next time you make this for your customer, well, you want to go up here to file and you want to use print. Well, let's look at print preview. So print preview is here. And because the hoop is so large and you're printing this on eight and a half by 11, well, it's going to cut it off some. You go up here and you can go to the next page. See what the next page shows. And this is the other half of the hoop. And then the next page shows your colors and your color stop. And then the final page will show the breakdown of each color. And that's quite useful for those who need that information. But if we go to file and we go to print, now keep in mind, I don't have info icon view open. I don't have any of that open right now. It's just, you know, the design and the uh, information panel. Then we'll go to file and we'll go to print. And when you go to print, it's going to open up your print dialog box. Down here at the bottom, it says print template only. That's what we want. We want that first page, which shows the actual design. So let's close this out so that you can see what I mean. So let's go to print preview again. This is what you're going to get printed out that you possibly could show a customer and say, hey, this is the design that I decided to use. I actually use this uh, view quite frequently to send to people to give me a pre-approval before I stitch it out. So this is useful for that. And if it um, shows up, let me take a view. So go to view and we have texture on. So let's take texture off and notice now it looks, you know, scratchy. So if you go to print preview, it's going to show up scratchy. So if you want it to show the stitches version to your customer, then make sure texture is off. If you don't want the customer to see um, your stitches, you want them to see it as if it was stitched out. Then you go to view and you want to do texture. And then the texture will be there for the customer to see. But going back to print preview, if this page here 
is the only one that you want to see just the picture of how it will print out then instead of all these other pages then what you want to do is go file you want to do print and make sure that print template only is selected and then you hit ok and it will go to the printer and the printer will only print the first page and the second page unfortunately with this design because it's eight and a half by eleven and it's split on the screen so um another way around that i'm not sure because i've never had to do it um i've always had four by four so it always fit so we'll have to play with that um let's see print preview uh you know what it will probably be under print and then properties and you probably could change the orientation like i can here see it says orientation you probably can change it to landscape and if you change it to landscape, it's a good possibility it would print the length ways and then you could get the whole design on one page. I'm not sure because I haven't done that yet, but we'll have to give that a shot and see if it works. Um, so we've gone over your hoops. We've gone over resizing um, print preview. So these are just some basic things. Um, another, I don't have the grid on right here. So you can turn your grid lines on so that you can line everything up properly. Um, you know, this view section, these are all the different things that you can turn on and off. And also with the grid view, if you go to file and print preview, notice your grid is going to show up. I didn't have the grid in my other print preview because I had the grid turned off. So you come over here and you turn off the grid lines. And then when you do your print preview, you'll see that the grid lines are gone. So, you know, the machine, the so what pro program basically does pretty much what you tell it to do. Um, you just have to make sure that, um, you know, the different options, the correct options are selected. And you also want to make sure that your correct um, version is here, because as I mentioned, the demo version will only do the first three stops. Um, there are many other settings and we'll do other videos to show how those go. But for the time being, that's pretty much to get you started um, in SoWit Pro and answer some of the most common questions that come as you're using SoWit Pro for the very first time, especially the demo version. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. And until next time, happy embroidering.